welcome to my YouTube channel if you're new here. My name is Morgan Ben. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I want to talk about how I realistically was able to tone up while still eating what I want, which in reality is everyone's dream, right? To still eat the foods you enjoy and still get fitter. Well, it frustrates me that that doesn't go hand in hand, that people believe you have to be on a strict diet for your entire life to have the body of your dreams or a body that you can feel strong, confident, and happy in. So the first thing I wanna say is my weight fluctuates a lot. My weight fluctuates day to day, month to month, and even year to year. And it is so normal for your body to fluctuate. Since posting this video two years ago, I feel as though I've gained more muscle, I'm stronger, I'm faster, and I've toned up while still eating foods I love and repairing and even having a stronger relationship with food than I had in the past. The emphasis I wanna put on this video is your relationship with food and your body is everything. You can have progress, but you might not mentally see it because you are stuck in body dysmorphia or you are stuck in a bad relationship with food. The biggest thing I wanna emphasize with this video is not so much losing weight or toning up, but more so how you can eat the foods you love and still see results. So I'm making this video not necessarily to encourage weight loss or toning up, but instead to encourage intuitive eating, food freedom, and helping you find a happy and balanced relationship with food. Tip number one, eat what you love, but add to it. For example, if you love eating pasta, that's like your favorite go-to meal, Continue to eat your favorite meal, but you can add to it by adding veggies either cooked inside your pasta or maybe adding a salad on the side or adding cooked broccoli on the side. And I'll give like a visual example as well so you can see what I'm talking about. One of the best ways I think you can be healthy without overthinking it is really finding recipes you love and customizing them to fit your needs by adding to them, like adding more fiber, adding more vegetables, adding protein. And before someone in the comments is like, you're telling people to eat more, like eating more calories is how you gain weight. Take a step back for a second. What I'm saying is when you add volume to a dish with vegetables or with protein, you might find it to be more satiating. I'm not necessarily saying take the exact same amount of pasta noodles you normally eat and then force feed yourself extra veggies on top of it. I'm saying add those extra veggies into it and then eat as much as you want or as much until you feel full. And what you'll find is by gently incorporating nutrition and by making it not a negative thing, but something you can enjoy, it becomes easier and not like a chore, if you get what I mean. <laughs> My fallback is, what am I craving? Okay, let me add something to that. Even if I am really just not craving a vegetable, I know and I acknowledge that's fine. I don't need to eat pasta with veggies today. I can just have a full bowl of pasta. One meal in one day is such a small percentage of your diet in your entire lifetime. It won't affect your body at, like you think it would. Number two, be mindful, but not obsessed. This is a really hard one to talk about because calories are such a tricky conversation and also a very triggering conversation for a lot of people. Being mindful, but not being obsessed means making healthier choices for yourself without anxiety. If you are ever doing anything and it's causing you stress, that's not healthy for you. So what I mean by mindful, but not obsessive, is for example, if you are cooking with a lot of olive oil, you might not realize that it could be setting you back from seeing your progress. Olive oil is a very healthy food and it is good to consume olive oil, of course, but it is also very low volume and high calorie. So it's very calorically dense. I just wanna add that that is not necessarily a bad thing. Calories are necessary and you need a certain amount of calories to just function. Even if you lay in bed all day, 
your basal metabolic rate is if you did absolutely nothing and you would still need to eat. With that said, foods that are calorically dense are not bad for you, like nuts, avocados. These foods are full of very essential minerals, vitamins, and are extremely good for you to consume. I think it's good to, like I said, be mindful of how calorically dense those foods can be but not obsessed. It might be helpful to understand caloric measurements of things, but it is not good to be like hyper fixating on it. Like you shouldn't be measuring out exact teaspoons of olive oil, or you shouldn't be like weighing foods by the gram. I think that's obsession. I just think personally for myself, I'm studying to be a holistic nutritionist. So learning about the nutrition of foods has been really helpful for me and really informative. But at the same time, I don't overthink my eating habits anymore at all and it's so freeing to just like grab however much peanut butter and slather it on toast because I mean that's like the only way to live I mean are you really gonna measure out every single spoonful of peanut butter for the rest of your life because that's excessive <laughs> Number three, I really love doing daily movement because I feel like this helps me get in the right headspace. And a lot of people talk about daily movement, but what can that look like? So for me, I really enjoy daily walks and I will just like grab my phone, I'll talk to someone, or I'll even just be like looking at emails on my walk. And I feel like it's just the perfect way to get light exercise in. I try to do that every day, but I'm also okay if I don't. Realistically, I probably go on a walk like four times a week and I just feel like it works the best for me. And movement can even be a 20 minute workout. There was a period where I didn't have a gym membership recently because um, I moved to Santa Barbara. So what I was doing was just 20 minute Pilates workouts every single day and I loved it. It felt like it was getting me in the right headspace, just making me feel very in tune with my body, like mind body connection because you know, you're know you like giving yourself 20 minutes to just fully focus on whatever workout you're doing. So this is completely unsponsored, but I use the Pilates class and I really enjoy them. So I'll add the link down there if you wanna check them out for yourself. But that is one way I love to get exercise at home, daily walks, and then I recently started doing core power again. I really enjoy core power because it makes me like sweat a lot and it's like really relaxing. But I also have gotten into weightlifting and I'll talk more about specific exercises that help me tone up um, further along. I'll put the timestamp here if you just want to skip there. Honestly, any form of exercise can be beneficial and I think as long as you're moving at least once a day, you're golden. <laughs> Number four, when you're in your journey, focus on the positives. I think it's very common for our minds to want to zero in on the negatives and just get stressed out. For example, I know I used to be like, I'm not improving fast enough, I'm not getting enough muscle, I feel puffy, I am not as strong as this person, or I don't look as good as this person. How come this person is so lean and skinny? And how come I feel so blah, blah, blah. And it's so easy for you to take the negatives or to compare yourself while you're in your journey. But focusing on the positives has really, really helped me. So number five, I'm gonna talk about specifically the workouts that helped me. I really believe weight training and strength training was game changing because I used to just run and diet and think that I would look lean and toned without really trying to build any muscle. And that's just not how it works. I have seen what really fit women do to maintain what they look like and of course you know your fitness isn't equivalent to your looks like i watched a video the other day from jubilee of these amazing women weightlifting and how strong they are and when you first look at them you might not think like wow that woman could lift almost 300 pounds but like she did so of course looks are not correlated to your fitness level but what i'm trying to say is i genuinely feel like when I started weightlifting is when I actually started seeing definition in my arms, started seeing like ab definition, and I had never ever seen that before when I was dieting and running. Like I never got that level of feeling toned. What I really recommend when it comes to strength training is training until failure. And so what that can mean is you can do a drop set 
where you are using weights and you're lifting them. Maybe you're using like 10 pounds, for example. And then once you feel like you can't do it anymore, you drop the weight and you do eight pounds and do as many as you can. And then you drop it again, you do five pounds. And so that's an example of um, drop sets. And you can do that with many exercises, squats, lunges. And basically what this is doing, this is time under tension. So it's putting your muscle under tension and is really ripping it apart for longer. Another way you can practice time under tension without weights entirely is really holding a body weight pose. So even holding a low lunge or holding a squat with no weight, but holding as long as you can will create that time under tension and you will feel sore, you'll feel some pain. That's kind of like what Pilates is as well, except when you use Pilates reformer, they have some like resistance with the bands and it's insane, I swear. I've never hurt more than when I've tried Pilates. That is another exercise I started doing recently and I saw definition again, like bam, like it just came on so fast. And I wanna do Pilates every day, but it's so expensive. <laughs> so I bought myself like a five class package and it was a lot of money, but I'm like pacing myself, you know, like spreading it out because I really enjoy it, but God, I need to like be able to afford it. <laughs> And then for cardio, I mentioned before, I mainly do walks. I walk, try to walk every day. I used to have a goal of 10,000 steps, but I found that to be unrealistic because I live in California and it's really hard to try to walk everywhere. It's mostly a driving kind of state. So instead, my goal is now 6,000 steps. Although moving to Santa Barbara has helped a lot because now I feel like I can walk to like downtown and I feel like I get a lot more steps by doing that. It's a lot more of a walkable city, but my goal is now six to 7,000 steps a day, but some days I don't walk at all and that's fine. I also have gotten a little into running. I haven't run now for like two weeks, but when I do run, I run for a mile and then sometimes I'll run for two miles. And also realistically, I'll probably run maybe like, let's just say like once every two weeks. When I'm really in like a running mood, for example, I like Barry Bootcamp. Barry Bootcamp. <laughs> I really like Barry's Bootcamp. Um, their classes are really fun. So when I'm in that kind of phase, I guess I'll run like two or three times a week. And it really just depends. And I think that's a point I want to make with workouts is it doesn't really matter what workout you're doing. As long as you enjoy it, you will most likely see results. So if you stay consistent and you continue to build up your strength and push yourself, whatever workout or sport you play or exercise you're doing, you will see improvement. And I think there's some like confusing information out there on the internet where I've seen people say like, oh, doing too much cardio made me X, Y, Z or lifting weights made me bulky. Honestly, to each their own, right? Like everyone's journey is different. I personally felt like lifting weights made me more toned because it gave me the muscle definition I had never had versus for someone else, it might make their body stressed and puffy. Oh, but it does make me puffy too. Like that's just normal. Every time I do a strength training workout, I come home and I feel puffy. Even after like hot yoga where I sweat everything out, I feel puffy. And that's because your body is trying to hold on to water and it's retaining water after that intense workout. So that's normal. Um, and I don't think you should ever look at your like day-to-day -day body's change as progress. I think the best way you can do it is just like taking photos and comparing them like months later because it takes time, a lot of time. It's been two years since I've been working out more consistently and I finally feel like I see drastic improvements with my strength so it takes time and i still know i have some ways to go like i have fitness goals for myself but these goals are now more focused on my ability rather than my appearance because the best quote i've ever heard is when you stop focusing on how you look is when you will actually see progress i also used to give up a lot and I used to cry because of how weak I felt and how incapable I felt of working out. I just would like go to a workout class and feel pathetic because I just couldn't do what everyone else seemed to be doing so easily. But trust me, it gets better. And trust me, 
you are so capable and so strong more than you even know. I think the big thing is it's also a huge mental game and your mind gets so much stronger with time. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, comment them down below and I will respond. I'm really so appreciative. And if you got to this end of this video, let me know what your favorite workout is because that shows me that you watched all of this and this was a lengthy video. <laughs> but I'd love to hear your favorite workout and we can chat in the comments. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.